search engine optimization for a multilingual website. Hello friends, my name is Alex and I'm the founder of Translation Cloud. In today's episode, I would like to go over some search engine optimization techniques and when it comes to translating a website and how to make it search engine friendly. We will look at three basic examples. Example number one, if you buy different domain names. For example, you had conveythis.com in English and you would like to make a, a foreign version in Spanish and a foreign version in Russian. So, to do that, you buy a different domain, conveythis.es for Spanish and conveythis.ru for Russian. Second approach is when you have only one domain name, such as conveythis.com, and you do not buy anything else, you just set up the subdomains. In example number two, we, we have the subdomain approach. Conveys.com is in English, and uh, all the Spanish and Russian versions are being added as the, as the small prefixes to the main domain. es.conveythis.com and ru.conveythis.com Lastly, the example number three, we're going over a, a folder approach. So we don't really buy anything, no more extra domains, no more extra setup, we just go with the subfolders. So our English version still stays the same, it goes in the root folder, uh, but our Spanish and Russian version goes into a subfolder. In Spanish version is dot, uh, slash es for uh, slash, and in Russian it's slash ru slash, or without slash, it's up to you. This is an okay approach for Google, don't worry about it. So what's the, what's the difference, you, you might ask? So the differences are pretty, pretty, pretty staggering. For example, you might uh, want to look into a deeper localization, not just translation of the content, but also to localize the content. Maybe your foreign uh, audience, aside from using US dollars, they use their own currency, uh, some sections of your website might not be as relevant to one uh, population rather than the other population. So you might omit those extra sections in the foreign version. So the approach of buying uh, in example number one and number two, it's a greater customization. You might be able to administer that as well. However, this is more, um, more labor intensive. You might, instead of having uh, a one web developer, whether it's a freelancer or an internal, you might even have to hire and support these websites with the team. It's more work for you and for the team. And it's slower because of the uh, updates are have to be pushed manually to each, uh, to each case. So let's look at this particular table where we show all three examples. In the column number two, there's a domains approach column number three the subdomains, and column number four is folders. And where we're on the left-hand side, we have uh, different categories which are important for search engine optimization, such as geo-targeting, trust and authority, uh, search engine results, backlink flow, administrations, how easy for you to administer the website, uh, or how easy is to tweak the design or the structure of the website, and lastly, how interlinking affects your uh, performance. So let's let's go with the domains approach, or let's go line by line, even better. So, in terms of geo targeting, when, for example, you want to set up different domains, .com, .es, .ru, this will allow you better marketing approach because. Uh, since this is technically at three different websites, it might be stored on the same server, but uh, nowadays uh, search engines such as Google, the advanced search engines, they prefer uh, local results, right? Like local marketing. So for your local result, if for example your target audience, uh, the search originates uh, in Russia, the Google will pick up the domain .ru and preferably from the IP address also located on the server in Russia. 
So this will allow us a faster time to load the page and better user experience. So search engines like to give a good result, so people will come back to them again and again for more, for more questions. So they, they serve them the local results. And the domain approach is the best for geo-targeting. Also, if you have a marketing kit, let's say a salesperson doing the promotion, adding this uh, website to the local directories, local yellow pages, local super pages, what have you, each country is different. So this approach allows this to, to do it deeper, to go deeper into categories, to look familiar for local people. So they will not be able to distinguish that you're actually a foreign company trying to do business in their country because your domain is fully representing that country or that language. So the folders approach is low. So the, the geo-targeting for the folders is lower because you cannot really uh, outsource folders which are located on one single server, one single machine with the one database you cannot outsource it to a different IP address, for example, and just promote it this way. So, uh, there is no feasible, feasible way I know of, and I'm a technical person, that you can do it, right? So the folder cannot be pinpointed to the local IP address. It has to be either a subdomain, which could, through the DNS changes on the on domain register, or better off, the brand new domain. What's the minus of this approach? Of course, it's more expensive. Each domain could be different price. If .com is one price, .de could be a different price, could be even in euros, because it's a Europe. .ru could be also third price. So you have to maintain all these registration dates, so you never miss the registration and some, um, and, and your domain does not go to the auction and gets bought for the cheap and then uh, rerouted to some some unfavorable, uncensored website. Uh, you have to keep an eye on it. It's a, it's a more strict and expensive approach. Plus, nowadays, every website is expected to have a SSL certificate. So you even, you even have to buy even those, even more SSL certificate, unless you use the Let's Encrypt and open source ones. But even though, when you stop the open source certificates, you're still required to to spend time generating those and setting up those certificates and constantly renewing them. This is a very labor-intensive approach. So expect to hire more IT people just to do that job for you. Uh, second part on our list is the trust and authority flow. For example, if you start from scratch, your trust is zero. But once you start getting more reputation, more backlinks to your website, some uh, famous .edu website links to you, uh, a government agency added your, your company and your website to their list of uh, available suppliers. So all these incoming backlinks, they're coming to your page and they're driving the trust and authority higher. But if you start with the domains approach, your each new domain, even though they have something common in between, such as your brand, in this case, convey this, but since it's the domain is different, .ru, .es, it's a totally different new website. And Google, Yandex, Bing, they will all treat it as a new website, and therefore, you will start from scratch. So all your hard work will have to be done all over again. So in this particular situation, going with the folders is the best way to do it. Yes, folders will add you more content to your existing page, therefore diluting the effectiveness of your search engine keywords and their rankings. But your trust and authority will be passed to those subfolders because these are your actual pages and they are located on the same IP address where your ser server is. Second, uh, third one is the search engine results. How many results Google or any other search engine will give you? In my experience and observing the situation, I would say that domains would give you more search results because these are three, instead of having one website, you have three websites. Therefore, you increase your probability of being displayed in a top 10 uh, outcome is increasing. But when you leave, have the same uh, localized pages 
as the folders in the, in the, in the last uh, row, uh, Google or any other search engine will not let you to dominate all the 10 positions, right? So if you're thinking about it, you have to have a different website to be in top 10 results. So it will be up to the search engine to decide which is which, which page is more relevant for this keyword uh, search query and which page is not. So you might think and work hard to promote your foreign versions, but the search engine will have the final word for it. Okay, so this is a limited, uh, limited uh, uh, display capacity. The fourth one is the backlink, um, the backlink flow. Uh, for domains, there is no backlink flow. For the subdomains and folders, yes, there is. So stick with, the, with the, those two. Administration, like I said previously, uh, administering one website for some user could be hard, but administering two or three or even five websites or more is even harder. So you're actually increasing your workload five, ten folds, right? So if you are having people on a, on a freelance, on outsource, uh, it'll be, you have to seek more people. If you have somebody full-timer, that, that full-timer will be just doing administration job to maintain these websites rather than doing anything else. So plan ahead. This is a great way to do it as well for the search engine optimization, but it's, it's more labor intense. And folders, on the, on the other hand, is very easy. You maintain these subfolders in the same way you maintain the website. And this point gradually leads us to another point, which is how easy it is to tweak the design and the structure of the site, of the pages, how to rename the URLs, rename the subfolders. And the answer is it's very, very low for the folders, for, since uh, all these folders load from one uh, set of common, common uh, sources. In a folders approach, there is, could be only one subfolder called images, and one subfolder could be called JavaScript, and one subfolder could be called uh, CSS, and so on, right? But in the example of the subdomains and domains, the customization level could be high. So, for example, if you sell in a foreign, foreign country, you can omit certain products, you can omit certain categories, even certain pages. Uh, this could be boiled down to, let's say, uh, legal pages. Some US countries require to have a privacy policy page on, uh, displayed prominently in their footer or any other page. And if you're probably uh, developing, uh, contacting, uh, targeting the other country, which might not have these specific requirements, you might omit that page and focus rather on doing something else. So this is, gives you much more flexibility into maintaining your corporate image, changing colors, changing logos, uh, updating pages, removing pages. These are totally different websites. So think about it as the new websites you're, you're maintaining. And the final point is interlinking. What is interlinking? Basically, it's when you link from one version to another. For example, you set up a common footer which interlinks all your foreign versions. Or it's a common header with a drop-down menu uh, with the flags and when you switch between the languages. So in, in the example of the domains, when you have all three are different, these are technically three different websites and it will not help you. But in uh, subdomains and the folders, it works great, especially for folders. So, uh, what's the verdict? What's the verdict if I would be you and choosing for the right plugin and the right approach to maintain the WordPress website, I would go with the right column for the folders. Look for the plugins that can, uh, on a programmatic level, use the same database as your original English one or whichever your source language is, and then create the subpages, additional uh, database uh, cells and subsections to, to store these uh, translated contents. The only caveat is you can do less in customization, yes, and you probably uh, will have limited uh, search results. That's also granted. And um, 
you might not be as localized for your local audience as you might would want to. As a language translation company, we deal with the clients who, who want to expand their presence overseas. And it depends how technical your product. If it's just a software download, you probably do not want to uh, truly customize the website experience. But if this is something local, such as a restaurant, you have to really look at the menu, you really have to look at the location, at the hours, everything could be quite different. So that's, that's the approach. Let me give you a bonus. According to Matcots from Google, which URL structure is more SEO friendly? Option A, we have site.com slash keyword one. And option B, we have site.com slash blah slash blah slash keyword one. Think about it for a moment. You can pause the video and when you're ready, play it again. So if you're ready, so let me tell you the right answer. The right answer is, it depends how these pages are interlinked. For Google, it doesn't matter if there are additional slashes in their URL. Google does not care about the internals of the website structure. What Google really cares is how long it takes you to get from an index page or a previous page to that page. If it's one click, then both pages are the same. If one page is only one click away, and the other page is four clicks away, then of course the option A would be better. So look at this particular example, how your menu is interlinked. And the final, final word for the conclusion is it, uh, is it more technical issue or political? So think about it. Uh, US is a multilingual country. We speak more than one language here. Um, as well as other countries, especially big ones. For example, Spanish. Spanish is spoken in Spain, in Mexico, in Venezuela, in Bolivia, and a handful of other countries. So if you make a Spanish version of the website uh, and you insist on having a Spanish flag from Spain, right? It might offend some other users who are considering themselves not as, you know, uh, related to the Spain, even though they do speak the language. So the new, somewhat the different approach is to go by the country, not to call the subfolders as .es, but call the subfolders on your website by the name of the country. US, UK, Australia, Germany, what, what have you. So this way, you're able to talk to the people more locally, more uh, understandably, and there'll be less deviation in the way that things are being treated. So, as a webmaster, make a decision. Make a decision. And now, I would like to uh, thank you for watching this video to the very end. Uh, again, my name is Alex. I'm the founder of Translation Cloud, and um, thank you for watching this video. Uh, give us some likes. Leave us the comments below, and more importantly, ask questions. I want to hear your opinions. I want to maybe have people who disagree with me. So stay tuned and watch us. I will see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.